Hey, what's up guys? Ara here and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2019 career mode, episode number 51 today for the French Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A very entertaining race to say the least at the Canadian Grand Prix. But now we come to France, which should be a little bit more tricky maybe for our car, especially so as we enter this race finally now. You know, we started talking about our rivals, starting to close us up a little bit at Canada. You know, Renault were pretty rapid there, McLaren as well in that first in at least... Montreal, but now fully officially on paper, McLaren are the number one team on the grid. You can see a massive step forward there for them. That's at least two major upgrades, I would say, early, or one ultimate upgrade. And Red Bull plateau, uh, the Red Bull plateau continues as Renault overtake them, and Red Bull now remaining in fourth place on the, on the kind of chart, and they're not really catching any up, any kind of ground that I want them to, to Toro Rosso, basically. Effectively, why we made the swap, basically, and uh, why we'll be a Toro Rosso until they close up that gap. But now, we have a very interesting race on our hands and potentially uh, interesting next few races if uh, McLaren can really start taking the fight to us because so far it really has been the, the Leclerc myself show basically it's been a 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two. we just swapped round who's first, who's second but now we might have a different team in the mix here fighting for the race win and those podium spots so it could get, uh, could get tasty, it could get tasty so let's get into qualifying then and see how we do on Saturday. Welcome to qualifying for this weekend's French Grand Prix the teams are making their last minute adjustments before the lights go green and the fight for pole position gets underway. So Anthony, here we are with another exciting qualifying session ahead of us. Uh, tell me, what are you hoping to see today? Well Crofty, it's always at the back of my mind that I'd love to see the lap record broken. But even without that, I'm hoping to see some fantastic edge of your seat driving today. With the conditions as they are, I'm sure we'll see some very fast laps as the drivers push themselves to squeeze out every millisecond that they can. Right, so delving into Q1 then here at France, the first lap was uh, pretty slow. You can see there we're in P18, so that's not relative of where our actual pace is. You can see already gaining about seven tenths here as we're not even finished the end of Sector 2. Probably can gain some more time in Sector 3, just trying to get in the groove of this car, even though this car is feeling a lot more comfortable. Like I mentioned a few episodes ago, uh, just generally with the weight movement, France is always quite tricky to dial in there. And so we go across the line into P4 eventually at the end of the session and make it through easily into Q2. Leclerc up there in P4 at the end of I'm P7. You can see the two McLarens are looking pretty strong in 1 and 2 in Q1. So I think, you know, we've had in the past where cars have got close on the R&D chart, but they don't fully, you know, show what they're worth. And McLaren really actually haven't shown that what they're worth. They never did last season in season 2 of this career mode, but I think now they really will uh, be obviously there right with us with the step they've made forward on the R&D chart. They are quite a bit ahead on paper with that leap they've made. So I think they will be there for fighting. In Q2, we are up in P1. So that was a much better lap for me, but you can see how close things are between myself and Lando Norris, even Gasly's up there. Uh, obviously, he's, for, he's a home Grand Prix, so he'll want to do well. Leclerc a little bit down on that Q2 lap time, so hopefully he can pick things up. Into Q3, though, the top 10 shootout. First run here. This is on a scrub set of soft tyres because I used two fresh sets in Q1 because of that uh, calamity first lap I had, basically, in Q1. So this is basically just a bank collapse. I know it wasn't going to be great, but also we get hit with a bit of dirty air from Valtteri Bottas, put off a little bit there as he comes into that brand new pit lane entry, which we haven't actually seen so far on this game, uh, on this uh, channel, by the way, guys, in Season 2, I recorded the French GP episode uh, before the patch came in. So this will be the first French Grand Prix in career mode on this game that will have the new pit lane entry. Uh, so that will be something to contend with a little bit in the race, maybe. I'm a little bit nervous, actually, about how hopefully we don't mess that up and we can not lose too much time going to that entry because I'm too used to the old one, even though it was very, very awkward indeed. But we now move into the second flying lap in the top 10 shootout, then obviously already gaining a decent amount of time. And we will just being on a fresh set of soft tires versus scrub set. But now we move into sector three and this is where we can hopefully gain some more time and not get hit with any dirty air clean track ahead of us the, the checker flag's fallen already Sergio Perez is on provisional pole right now Leclerc I believe is down in somewhere second or third so right now McLaren do have pole position we go a little bit wide there on the entry to the second last corner try and gain some sp speed back in the last corner lock up on the front tire but we do gain some speed as we go over the curb DRS open what will be across the line and it's going to be second place in the end for us there just couldn't get pole position. Third place is Charles Leclerc. It's so, so close between myself and Charles, but Sergio Perez is the man of the hour with a stonking lap here at the French GP. Massively ahead of us. I mean, it's a huge gap, really, if you consider how close it was in Q2 and Q1 and how close things are between myself and Leclerc there. And also, I mean, Perez done a great job compared to his teammate, Lando Norris, who's down uh, in between the two Renaults there. So this will be an interesting race. You know, Perez, the man who won the very first race of this season after both Toro Rosso had issues in that 
that race of Butler and Leclerc. He's now the man on pole. Could he be the one to break the Toro Rosso win streak here today? Hopefully not. Hopefully we can fight back along with Charles. Let's go to Sunday. Let's go to the grid. Welcome along then to the circuit Paul Ricard, home of the French Grand Prix, home race of the Renault team, and of course a number of the drivers on the grid as well. Of the 14 races held here up until 1990, five were won by a Frenchman, and four of those, of course, were Alain Prost. I wonder who'll add their name to that winner's list today. Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, six left and nine right, for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the Chicane Nord. And watch out for the drivers running onto the distinctive coloured stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Now, let's talk about Sergio Perez. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromised start. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. The engineer lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Norris, Lucas Faber, and Gasly, Butler, Hamilton, Bottas, and Kevin Magnussen, Perez, Holkenberg, Sebastian Vettel, and Ricardo, Kvyat, Russell, Kimi Raikkonen, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Grosjean, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Right, so here we are then on the grid for the French GP in first place, no less, because if you looked at the grid sequence, Sergio Perez has been handed a 10-place grid penalty for, I'm assuming, two different engine parts that are being changed there. So it's a 1-2 in the end then, a front row lockout for the Toro Rosso boys, even when McLaren beat us. So we have a very good chance then of trying to nail down a win. I have no doubt, though, McLaren are going to still be quick. Renault uh, showed some good pace and flashes of speed at Canada, so I'm sure it'll still be a tougher Grand Prix than we have had in the last three episodes I'm sure but it just makes life a little bit easier that run down to turn one potentially just between myself and Leclerc strategy will be a two stop it says uh, soft tire to two to mediums we'll see how that works because uh, sometimes now the one stop can be the better way to go in France especially with the tire upgrades now in season three for most of our cars so we'll just see about that on the fly and as usual with the great Honda engine now these days don't need to fill up on extra fuel so we can run nice and aggressive and not have an issue so here we go then to five red lights suit the French Grand Prix it's been three wins in a row for Toro Rosso since I joined the team. Will it be four here today as the lights are out and we're underway? It's a good start for us there, but initially, but then in third and fourth gear, bogging down quite a fair bit with some second phase wheel spin. And Leclerc goes round the outside. Verstappen are inside. The McLaren also nips round the outside. We hit Verstappen on the front left there and have a bit of ping pong into turn one. I'm actually thankful there's no damage on the front wing. But now it's Verstappen and Norris that are side by side there. A really nice bit of action there. So Lucas Weber, the car behind us, but Leclerc in the lead of the GP. So that was really, really not on so poor from us in that second phase of the start I initially got a great getaway there so I thought okay it might be like Canada once again and we might actually go into turn one leading the race once more but then that second phase just bogged down so much and then into turn one just kind of got caught out left and right by Verstappen and Norris speaking of the two though we're going to try and go and do battle with them as we go around the outside of Norris pushed off the track a little bit by our fellow countrymen and Verstappen also getting in the mix there so it was three wide into a corner that was never going to work three wide so something had to give and it looks like it was myself and Verstappen having to go off circuit either end of Lando Norris in the middle there. We do get the job done though and we're up into P3 at least on Verstappen. Now we chase after Norris, try and get it into P2 but look at that aerial shot there. The gap to P1 already massive. So Leclerc trying to run away with this GP early on and trying to break that DRS which he already has done of course. Even lap 2 when it's not enabled. So here we go now as we move back to our POV. Chasing down Lando Norris there. Getting some time into that chicane. Oh good exit there off that. Trying to shoot us across with overtake mode and we're going to gain and gain but can we gain enough to make a move into sector 3 Norris very slow to the right hander and here we go flat out there using the grip we've got on the Toro Rosso car we go side by side to the next long right hander just feathering the throttle trying to get the power down in 4th gear we get it done and we're up into P2 then go defensive straight away and try and block off
take off any kind of line Norris might have. And we're up there. And it's a 1-2 for Toro Rosso. But on lap number five, Lucas Weber now is the man in P3. He's overtaking his teammate. He's overtaking Lando Norris. And now he will try and overtake me around the outside in lap number five. And the chicane, he's done the job. But we go back around the outside of the next right-hander. And we're wheel-to-wheel -wheel on the exit there. It's such fine margins. We're squeezing him right to the edge there. No love lost between two former F2 teammates. Norris is getting involved as well on the outside. It's momentarily for a split second there. Probably about three wide for just a tiny bit there as both their noses were very uh, parallel to my rear tyres there. But we just about keep it through in P2. But for how much longer? Because once again, next lap, Lando Norris comes knocking once again on the left-hand side there. We squeeze him nearly completely off the circuit as we really want to maintain this P2. Uh, it won't matter too much at the end if I'm fighting so hard for P2 though if Leclerc's walking away with this because he is. I mean, look at the minimap. I can't even see his dot on the minimap there. He's He's got so much good pace. On lap number seven now, Leclerc has come in for his pit stop. We're going longer as we continue to fight Norris and continue to fight Lucas Weber because now I've realized Leclerc has got such a big lead now in this Grand Prix. The only way I can try and fight Leclerc and get back into contention for this race win is trying to go for a very ambitious one stop, soft tire to the hard. And so whilst the two McLarens fight, I'm trying to do my best job of keeping these tires in check. But it looks like the two McLarens and that Mercedes and Red Bull behind them might also be trying the one stop, the soft to the hard tires. A lot of us trying this very ambitious strategy. Don't know if it'll work out. We'll have to see. But Leclerc is definitely on for that standard default two stop, soft to two sets of mediums. So we're kind of committed now. It's too late. It's going to go onto two onto the two stop and make it work. We have to commit now. And so that's what uh, that's what the plan of action is going to be. As we move on to lap number eleven, then, and you can see on the uh, on the bottom right there, my front left tire and my front right tire were both a little bit hot and cooked on the internal carcass temperature. So trying to uh, maintain uh, the temperatures in some kind of good level in the green section and trying to protect the tires as best I can as we go on towards the kind of 70% wear region and that's when the tire carcass really starts to heat up quite a fair bit even if you don't drive quite aggressively so just trying to monitor those uh, tires as best I can to control the Grand Prix control my car control my race as well as trying to keep Magnussen uh, behind me at bay as we move on towards lap 13 we're going to confirm we want to box in probably in this next lap here but Magnussen is hounding me he's on the medium tire so he's doing the one stop but he's uh, obviously done that kind of more you know a bog standard one stop here at France he was outside the top 10 he started on medium tires going to hard I'm trying to stretch these softs as best I can and uh, whilst not losing too much time defending Magnussen here so this is going to be a very important part of the Grand Prix but look at that there the front left tire 75% we're going to get towards the very uh, iffy region of 80% wear so risking a puncture here thankfully though I will come in on this lap but a massive lock up on the front left and Magnussen has a little look we just about slowed down the car I actually slowed down way uh, way, way more than I needed to because I didn't realise where the line was for the pit entry like I mentioned earlier in the video this is the first time I've done the new pit lane entry for France ever on the game here so I didn't know exactly where the line was so I probably went a little bit slower than I need to but we made it thankfully sigh of relief we did make it no puncher disaster averted now we come in for hard tyres and we try and see where we're going to be in uh, comparison to Leclerc because hopefully if he's within a one stop pit stop region that's it that's us should be ahead of Leclerc because he's going to have to make a second stop and uh, we should be good. The only thing is, though, is we come out there just behind Pierre Gasly of the Red Bull, the, my previous teammate, of course, from three races ago. Uh, I believe the two McLarens have jumped me in the pit stops, and they're also on a one-stop. So we may have won the battle against Leclerc, but we might have just lost the war against the McLarens because they had some very good pace on those soft tyres. They've made a very good uh, job of the undercut on the hard tyres so far since they came in about a lap or two earlier than me. So, uh, you yeah, know, we might have won against our teammate here, but McLaren might have just won this Grand Prix. But of course, never say never in Formula 1, so we'll keep on fighting on as we power past Gasly then very easily on lap number 14 there. Fresh tyres and of course the straight line speed advantage with the Toro Rosso versus the Red Bull, which is kind weird to say considering we have the same engine but of course the R&D chart is a little bit different for all teams here so I feel we have a bit more speed with the reduced drag as well on this package here very efficient car and so now here we go we're catching up to two Mercedes cars in the third sector I'm getting a big sense of deja vu here guys I don't know about you guys from last season here we go down the inside of Valtteri Bottas there and now down the inside of Lewis Hamilton maybe it's going to be very fine on the left hand side there with him but we get the job done and we're taking two Mercs in swift fashion there in sector three at the French Grand Prix. I don't know where I've heard that from before. I have a, fe I have a feeling we did that. Did we 
do that last season in the Alfa Romeo? I think we did. Yeah, so good times. Very, very odd, actually. That really freaked me out at the time when I, when I was doing this race. Very much freaked me out how that actually happened once again. But anyway, here we go then. Uh, the race lead is actually Verstappen from Lucas Weber. The two Renaults also on a two-stop today. And Leclerc in third place then behind the two Renaults. So he's lost out. And the reason is, if you look carefully, he's got massive damage on the left-hand side of his front wing. So Leclerc is going to be very slow. So not only am I within a one-stop pit, uh, pit stop window of him, he's slowing down anyway due to that damage he's got on his car. So there's no doubt in my mind I will be beating my teammate today. It'll, the question is, is going to be, can I try and take the fight to the McLaren cars? Because I think the Renaults will also make a second stop. It will be out of contention. It will just be a fight between myself, Norris, and Perez. And so speaking about Norris, here he is then. A little bit slower than his teammate today, Sergio Perez. And so can we try and overtake him here? Lap number 17, the, the Grand Prix's gone by in a flash, actually. Only 10 laps to go in this GP. But we've got some very good speed here because we're at the fast lap of the Grand Prix uh, beforehand as we start to rubber in with these hard tyres. And so here we go in a straight line. Easy does it. Up into P5. And now Devin Butler is the next man to try and chase down. As we go through onto the end of lap 17, uh, the two Renaults will come in along with Leclerc. And so we're going to go across the line up into P3. It'll be of this GP. So right now as it stands, it is Sergio Perez that leads the way from Devin Butler in second place, myself in third. And so both Renaults out of contention, like I said. Leclerc also out of contention with also some damage as well. So that'll slow him down massively. So it's going to be a pretty horrendous day in the office for Leclerc, which is going to be unfortunate. It breaks that kind of nice pattern we had of 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, swapping around one and two positions. But it had to end at some point, I feel. And maybe this uh, this was always going to be the race, the race where McLaren on paper was faster than the Toro Rosso on the R&D chart. So how here we go, trying to fight Butler for second place. He's obviously going to the end of the Grand Prix as well, so he can fight for position as much as he wants. And he's being very aggressive indeed there on the pinch on the right-hander there. So Butler, obviously, I swapped cars with him. Maybe he's a little bit salty that he's now in the slower Red Bull. I'm in the faster Toro Rosso, so he's really getting the elbows, uh, elbows out here. I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't blame him. I would be the exact same if I got demoted to a slower Red Bull car. But last, we're going to keep patient here. Lap 20 onto lap 21, and I think we should have the straight line speed to try and catch him on this lap here as we go across the line. DRS open there. Rich Mix going the entire time, of course, most of this Grand Prix really due to the efficiency of this engine. And we go around the outside up into P2 of the Grand Prix. Sergio Perez then ahead of us. Six laps to go. We're got, we've got fresher tyres, remember? About two laps fresher than Sergio Perez. So I've got to hope his tyres start going off and mine do not. And we carry for this pace here. But just making sure we can get away from Butler because he's actually sticking with us a little bit worryingly through sector one. So hopefully on the exit here as we just shoot off onto the long back straight, we can just power away and break that toe from Butler as we move aggressively towards the left-hand side there, just trying to break the slipstream and make sure we maintain the P2. But Butler looks like he could actually keep a very good third place. This would be for him, to be fair. And remember, Sergio Perez, obviously, he was on pole position. He got a 10th place grid penalty and was down to P11. So right now, for him to be in P1, he's done a great, great job. He had to start on the same tyres he qualified in Q2 because, of course, the engine penalties don't give you any special treatment there. So he didn't have a, a, a strategy advantage, per se. So he's done really well here. On lap 27, though, I'm trying my absolute best to try and spoil this party and try and get a last-minute victory here for Toro Rosso. But it's the last lap. We're gaining a lot there. We're finally in the DRS zone of Perez for the last two laps here, but just can't gain enough on that back straight there. We're using hot lap and overtake mode as much as we can. We've got enough rich mix to use there because I saved some fuel on the previous lap there. So we're giving it all we've got in this last sector to try and maybe spook Sergio Perez off the track. And if not, just give him a very hard run to the line for P1 here. But it's been a very good day in the office for Sergio Perez. Like I just mentioned, you know, it's a, it's a you know very, very well-deserved win if he does get it here from P11 to P1. He was on pole yesterday. You can see the rear end snaps. And I think that just might be my race gone there as I just try to push a little bit too hard. But it's P2 for us today. We're still no lower than P2 in this Toro Rosso since I moved to the team. Leclerc's had a very bad day in the office. So in the end of it, it's a decent day for us because we'll take the lead of the Drivers' Championship. But Sergio Perez gets his second win of the season. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance. Brilliant stuff from McLaren today. What a superb victory. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day, and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend poring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace, and our winner today showed they could do both.
Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. So you can see the Toro Rosso actually had some raw pace in that race. Leclerc gets a fast up of the Grand Prix, so one extra point for him to help him a little bit there. But obviously being so far down compared to myself in second place, we do take a nice commanding lead the championship now. I say commanding, it's 10 points, but in, in this career mode so far, 10 points has been a massive gap in the championship, really, if you think about it there. McLaren now move up to second place. The Instructors over Renault there, and they're maybe going to start charging towards us perhaps, but they're yet to have the consistency that we've shown at the team obviously with our multiple one twos so it's a little chink in the armor this race but uh, next race Austria could be a good one for us there with the engine power meaning a lot more and obviously our engine being very efficient so we could bounce back there we'll have to see but I think McLaren have finally arrived this season here you know obviously even last season they, they should have arrived last season they never, never really did even though even when they were kind of top of the R&D chart at some points last season in season two so this might be finally where McLaren actually start vying for multiple race wins in this season but I'm hoping that me and Leclerc can still be in contention for a decent amount there but that's been a decent French Grand Prix for me at least and uh, I think the best we could have hoped for really with how things panned out there so guys if you did enjoy that be sure to hit that like button let me know your thought in the comments below if you are around here do subscribe for weekly forum content I've been Arifa I'm just there I'll see you guys next time goodbye